In the last two lessons, uh, we've been working with creating methods. And the methods that we've been creating have been called uh, world level methods because the methods have been attached to the, the world up here at the top. But you can also create class level methods. And these are methods that are attached to particular objects. And in this exercise, we have ourselves a little ice skater here. And again, you can um, save this Alice world from the course database, or you will find it uh, um, if you have the uh, Alice 2.0, you will find it uh, in the CD that you got as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the ice skater object here, okay? And with the ice skater, of course, we have a collection of methods here. And what we're going to be learning how to do is we're going to be learning how to add methods to this particular la list. So these aren't going to be world level methods. These are going to be methods specific to the ice skater, so ice skater methods. We call these class level methods. And the reason they're called class level methods is, as you'll see at the end of this particular exercise, you are able to save the this ice skater object as a new class of objects. And then in a different Alice world, in a different program, you can instantiate objects from your new class. In fact, you can instantiate as many as you want. And any new methods that you created will be inherited. In other words, they'll be carried along with it into these new objects that you've created as well. So the methods that we're going to be creating are not going to be just for this ice skater. But we're going to be saving this as a new class, and these methods will be available to any ice skater that we make from this new class that we're going to be creating. This also is an exercise to show you how sophisticated these methods can be with a little bit of foresight and uh, a little bit of planning. And to be honest, um, the, the sophistication of this particular animation is actually beyond what I'm going to expect most people to get into. Um, but it shows you what, what is possible and what what is capable with this particular program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you take a look in your textbook on page 94 and 95, it goes through great detail sort of planning out um, the thinking process into these methods. But I'm actually going to kind of jump right to the chase. And I'm just going to create these methods. So if you don't quite see exactly what's going to be going on, don't worry too much about it. But what you need to be able to do is to follow along and create these yourselves and then you'll just see the end product which is fine okay so if I want to create um, a class level method associated with the ice skater the first thing I need to do is make sure I have the ice skater selected and then I simply go down here under the methods tab and I you know, make sure you have method selected I say create a new method just like I did with a world level method and I have to give the method a name and this particular one is going to be called slide left I'm going to say OK. And I want to take a look at the name of the method right here in the tab. Notice that it says ice skater slide left. Okay, So it's telling you which object the method is associated with um, right from the beginning, or right at the very beginning before the dot. If I click on a world and create a new method from the world, and again, I can actually call it the same, or what was it, slide left. I can call it the same thing. Notice how here it says the name of the object now is the world slide left. So this is a world level method, while this one here is an ice skater or a class level method specific to the ice skater. Um, I actually want to delete <laughs> this slide left here because there's no instructions for you to do that. So I'll throw that into the trash can. Okay, But make sure as you're creating your methods that it, they all say ice skater. They need to all be connected to the ice skater. And if you ever see world there, delete it select the ice skater and create the methods from the ice skater. Other than the fact that these methods are attached to the ice skater instead of the world, everything else that we're going to be doing in this exercise you've done before. So I'm not going to go through all the details of making these particular methods. Instead, I'm just going to kind of dissolve to the final product. You should, at this stage, be pretty comfortable with generating all the stuff that you're about to see. You can generate from the images that I'm about to show you of the final product. You can just pause it and then just reconstruct it. Or you can look at the images in your textbook out of this section on page, uh, let's say they start on page 96 and go on through to page 99. Okay, so let's just uh, dissolve over to the final product. So here we have our final ice skater with all the methods. So what I'm going to be doing now, these 
is uh, go through each of these methods, give you a chance to look at them, and also talk about kind of what they're doing. So the first method we created was called slide left. And actually what I want to draw attention to before we, I even get into showing all the methods is notice how every one of these methods are all attached to the ice skater, all except for the my first method here, of course, which has to be attached to the world. But all these methods are created to the ice skater. So once again, Make sure your methods are attached to the ice skater, and you do that by making sure the ice skater is selected when you press the create new method button. So our first method is called a slide left. Here it is right here. I'll scroll down a little bit so we can see it. Actually, let me move this up maybe a little bit so that we can uh, see the whole thing. There we go. Okay, there's the whole slide left method. Uh, you have to create this. You might want to pause this video and construct it yourself. But what I'm going to do is go through each of these steps. The one thing that is new is this wait method that you see right here. And this wait can be found right down here on the bottom. Okay, You simply drag it in where you want. And what the wait does is exactly what it kind of implies to do. It gets the program to wait for half a second. So what this slide left does, well, let's go through. It's, it's not that complicated. We get the right leg to turn forward. Uh, point 0.1 of a revolution, and then we get the upper body to turn forward point zero 0.01 of a revolution. We wait for half a second, and then if you notice, the second do together is the exact opposite of the first. It just turns everything back. And the, to see what it does, actually, the easiest thing to do well, there, is to uh, go up to the event window, and in the ice skater, select the slide left method, so that when we play this program, it will just do the slide left, and we'll see what this does. So the slide left is very simple. Restart will do this again. Okay, Just does that little bit of a motion. All that happens is the right leg moves back and the body kind of turns forward a little bit. The next method is a slide right, which if you look at it is almost exactly the same except it's affecting the left, so the left leg rather than the right leg. So it's the left leg that's going to move instead of the right leg. So it does very much the same. These aren't too exciting, but what they're done is if we take a look at the next method that we created, which is called the skate method, and again, you should be creating these as well. Just simply pause this video and reconstruct what you see here. The thing to notice is that in the skate method, let's see what happens. Well, first there's a description. The entire ice skater moves forward as the legs slide left and then right. So what we have is the ice skater move forward two meters over a period of three seconds. And then while it's sliding forward, notice the big do together, we're going to perform the slide left method. Remember what the slide left method was? It just got the, the one leg to slide backwards a little bit. And then the slide right, which got the opposite leg to slide backwards and then back a little bit. So when all of this is combined together, the, two, the slide left, the slide right, with the skater moving forward, we get this effect. So we'll go back up to our ice skater and let's do the skate method and we'll play that and now what we get is the ice skater skating okay we get a combined slide left slide right with the ice skater skating like that okay so a little bit more of a sophisticated motion than what we're used to notice what's sort of happening here the end method we wanted was actually the skate method that's the one we would use in another program, right, to get the ice skater to skate. But the skate method uses, because it's kind of a complicated motion, it uses other methods to help it accomplish it. It uses this slide left and slide right method. So the slide left and the slide right methods are never designed to be called on their own. They're designed only to help the skate method. And for that reason, they're called helper methods. We created another set of methods for this, again with some helper methods. Let's first take a look at the helper methods. Um, the next method that's created is called the prepare to spin method. So again, pause the video and construct this one yourself. The prepare to spin method gets the um, ice skater to lay, uh, turn both her arms upwards. And then the left leg is going to turn to the left, point two of a revolution and point and turn backwards 0.25 of a revolution. It's going to do this all at the same time. To get a look at what this is, go to Ice Skater, select Prepare to Spin. We'll play that. And that's all the Prepare to Spin does. Okay. 
And can you guess what would be the next part? Yeah, the ice skater is going to do a spin. Okay, so we got this prepare to spin method, which accomplishes that little bit of a motion. Uh, the next method to create is called finish spin. So again, pause this video or look at the image that's in your textbook. It's exactly the same. And recreate this particular method. Again, when you make this method, make sure it's an ice skater method. Okay, so that uh, not a world method. That is important. Okay. And what the finish spin does is the exact opposite of what the prepare to spin does. It lowers the arms back down and lowers the leg back down. And then our final method we we're going to create in this particular lesson is called the spin. Okay, looks very, very short because it uses these other methods. So this is the method that's going to get the, the uh, ice skater to spin. Okay. And notice how we have a parameter in this particular method. Remember, the way you create parameters is to simply create a new parameter, pressing the button over here on the right. This parameter is called how many spins, so I'll give it that name. And notice the one, two, three beside it there. This parameter has to be of type number. So make sure you make this parameter of type number. And again, in the last lesson, we were talking about parameters, so that shouldn't be a problem. And this parameter is going to allow us to set how many spins we want the ice skater to do. Okay. But let's take a look at the method here. Um, first, we're going to do call the prepare to spin method. Again, prepare to spin is really a helper method. Prepare to spin is not something you would normally call on your own, but it helps to create this spin method. So first, the ice skater is going to prepare to spin. Then the ice skater is simply going to turn left how many spins, whatever number we decide to you use. And then it's going to finish spin by lowering his arms and lowering her legs. Okay, and so that's our spin method. So let's take a look at the spin method. Okay. So we're going to call spin. Notice because it has a parameter, we have this extra thing we have to provide. How many spins do you want to do? Oh, let's say we'll do two spins. Okay. And so now I can uh, press the play button. Let's see how this looks. So prepare to spin, does their spins, lowers, and comes back to the beginning. We'll do a restart. Now, to be honest, the frame rate of this recording probably doesn't do this spinning justice. So it probably looks kind of stinky on this video. Uh, when you do it yourself, it should look better than what you're seeing here. And you can see she spun around two times. If I want to change the number of spins, all I have to do is change the parameter. Let's say we get her to spin five times. So we say, okay, five. And now how many spins is a five? And now when we press play, She does five spins. Okay, again, the frame rate of this video is not really making this work very well, but that's what it is. You should see it better. Okay, so again, spin method is using these two spin, the prepare to spin and the finish spin, as what we call helper methods to help accomplish this. So overall, we've given our ice skater two new abilities: the ability to skate in a semi-realistic sort of motion, and the ability to do a spin. Okay. So what we're going to do next, and this you have to follow these instructions very carefully, is we're going to save this ice skater as a new class, and then we're going to start a whole new program, and I'll show you how you can bring the ice skater into this new program, and it will inherit all of these methods that we just created. Now the first thing we have to do, and this is what's important, it's easy to miss, is we have to change the ice skater name to something else and the reason for this is because when we go to save this as a class Alice will force us to have to save it with the same name as the name of the object so in other words if we kept it ice skater we would have to save it as the ice skater class and this is actually something that's done in a professional programming language called Java on which Alice is based and uh, they're kind of modeling that so if you take the next grade 11 math course next year you'll actually or grade 11 math course, grade 11 computer science course, um, that's something to get used to, that the class name and the object name needs to be the same. And if we say that as ice skater, there already is an ice skater class, and then we'll overwrite it and we'll lose our old ice skater. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this, and we're going to say rename, and it gives us a little cursor, and instead of ice skater, it's going to be, oops, it should be with a lowercase letter to start with, clever skater. Okay, so now what we do is we right click on our Clever Skater and we want to save this particular object. So we say Save Object. Okay, we can't change this class name. Pay attention to where you save it to. 
So I'm saving it to the desktop. I, in fact, I'm going to stay with that because I already have a clever skater somewhere else. I don't want to end up messing it up. So I'm going to save it to my desktop. You save it to whatever. This file, this clever skater, is what you're going to send me for the assignment. So not an HTML version of the program we just made, but the actual clever skater class. And notice, by the way, the extension right here, it says A2C. So I want that A2C uh, file. So save that. Saves it fine. Okay, and now I'm going to start a new one. So I'm going to do a brand new object and I'll just create just a blank snow template. I'm not going to bother with anything else. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Clever Skater. So here's the way you do it. It's not the normal way of adding objects. What you have to do is you have to go to uh, File and you have to Import right here. And it's still left over on my, I'm going to go to my desktop because that's where I had it saved. A lot of junk on my, but there should be a Clever Skater object. There it is, Clever Skater A2W. And I said, let's import that in. And here comes my Clever, adding the way it normally does. But now if I click on my Clever Skater, and I look at my methods, all those methods we've created are there. And I can create as many Clever Skaters as I want. Whoops move her out of the way. So if I want to have more Clever Skaters, all I simply do is import another Clever Skater. And there it is. And again, both of these two Clever Skaters will have these same collections of objects. Okay, so again, your job is to go through all that, send me that Clever Skater uh, class file, that A2C file. Okay.